ASP.NET Web Forms, Grid View Control, and Data Binding. This video lecture will introduce you to creating a grid view control and data binding with data in a SQL Server Express database. This will also cover edit, update, delete, and create with a grid view. Let's take a look at how we can bind data from a SQL connection to an ASP.NET Server control. So here I am in my database, in my SQL connection example in Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio Express. I have one table in this database called color. In the color database, I have three columns, color ID, an integer, which is the primary key, name, and hex. So the name goes here for the color and the hex code goes here for the color. Here is a look at what the table looks like. So color ID, primary key, name is the actual color name, and we have the hex codes. So here I have an example ASPX page with a code behind that I have created that is binding data from the database to a grid view control. This grid view control has edit, update, and delete capabilities. So for each row in the database, I am writing out the column name, the hex code. I'm creating a little color swatch out of the hex code. And you can click edit. And update. You can also click edit and cancel. Also outside of the grid view control, I've created a simple button with a, an event method that creates a new row. So this page was created with a, an ASPX page and a code behind called databindingexample.aspx. Now on the databindingexample page, we have a control, an ASP.NET web server control that is called grid view. Let's take a look at that. So the ASP.NET grid view is pretty simple for what it for what it does on the front end of the site. In the ASP.NET grid view, we have an ID, the Renet server tag, and some properties set on the control, like auto generate columns equals false, because I want to specify which columns I want to display, because I don't want to display the color ID, um, because the user doesn't care about the ID, they care about the color name and the hex code. I'm also defining some event methods for deleting, editing, and updating, as well as canceling. We'll take a look at these methods in the code behind in a minute. So a grid view can be thought of as a table with columns and rows. It maps to data very well. In our grid view, we define our columns. In this grid view that I have set up, we have a column for the hidden color ID. So this doesn't display. Nothing in this column shows up. This hidden field, this hidden field is to store the color ID so I can properly edit, delete, and update the row that corresponds to the color that we're on. The second field I have is name, and the third field I have is hex. I'm using ASP bound field, which auto generates the controls for the field based on whether we are editing or not. So as you saw on the front end of the site, when I edit, suddenly I get a text box control. And when I update, we have basically the equivalent of a literal control because this is just a string being output here. So that is achieved using ASP bound field. It handles that for me, whether we are editing or not, these will display. 
Um, if a bound field is to be read only, i.e. It, it, it stays a string when we are in edit mode, you set the read only property to true. I have another template field here, which contains the color swatch. So you might be getting the idea here, and that is that you wanna use a bound field. If you're just doing a simple field that you want to be able to update with a text box, then you'd use bound field. But if you wanna do something a little bit more complicated, like um, automatically populate a background color style on an element with the hex code that you have coming from your database row, then you're going to want to use template field. Now on bound field and template field, we can define header text, which will output, which will output in the header. I also have two other fields, which are command fields. So I am automatically outputting an edit button and automatically outputting a delete button. Now I don't have to handle the logic for showing and hiding the rows based on what we're editing. And I don't have to have a separate button for, or a link for deleting a row. This here corresponds to and will trigger the event for deleting, and this will trigger the event for editing. I also down here have a button for adding a new row. This button has a simple on-click event, and we'll take a look at that event handler here in a minute. So starting from the top of the page, you can see that in our page load method, I have an if not page is post back, find data to grid view. Now this is important because if I did not include this not pages post back, remember that this page load happens before in the page life cycle, load happens before uh, control event methods. So if I didn't have this check to make sure that it's not a page post back, I could bind the data before the user's input on the front end happened and wipe out the input that they put in with the fresh grid view. So very important to check for that first. I have encapsulated this to a method because I'm going to want to bind data to grid view quite a bit. So let's go to definition. So in bind data from grid view, you can see that we are getting the connection string to the database from the web config using system.web.configuration.webconfigurationManager. I am establishing a SQL connection and I am passing in that connection string. I open that connection. I initiate a SQL command. I initialize a SQL command, select color ID, name, hex from color, order by color ID. Simple, right? Now I am newing up a data adapter and passing in that command, and I am newing up a data set. And then on the data adapter, I call the dot fill method and on the data set to fill that data set with the rows from my SQL command. I'm doing a check here to make sure that there are actually rows in that data, data set. So basically the data set becomes a table with columns and rows. And if there are more than zero rows, then I'm going to set the data source for the grid view to the data set. And then I'm going to call the data bind method. And finally, whether or not there is an error, I'm going to close and dispose the database connection. So let's go from top to bottom and look at the row editing method. Simple, right? Not much there. I am setting the error literal text to stream dot empty, just in case there was an error previously before um, when they had edited before, now I've cleared that out. 
I'm setting the edit index to the new edit index and I'm going to bind data to grid view. So that basically, when I say the edit index is the new edit index that's being passed in here, that gets passed in when I click, when I click the edit button. I actually pass in the index for the row so I know which row I'm editing. And then I pass that into the grid view and then I go ahead and I data bind this again. And because I've passed in that row editing, this row is in edit mode. Row updating has a little bit more to it because we actually have to update the row in the database. So we have to do quite a few things. Now remember that the grid view, you can think of it as a table of data with columns and rows. So on the grid view update event args, I get passed in the row index like I did on row editing. And we use that row index to get a grid view row control. So we get that and we cast it to grid view row. Then we use grid view row on a number of things here. First is to get the hidden color ID from the hidden color ID control. And we cast that to a hidden field because that's what it is. Now for the name and the hex code to get the user's input, we go and we find the cell at one and the cell at index two. So basically column one and column two. Column zero has our hidden color ID in it. So name is in column one and hex code is in column two. So zero, one, two. And controls of zero because that is the only control that exists in that cell or column. So we go ahead and we get the connection string again. We knew of a SQL connection using that connection string. We open that connection. We create the SQL string with the name and the hex code and the hidden color ID dot value. That's at index zero, that's at index one, index two, index zero, index one, index two. So once we have our SQL string, we pass that in as a SQL command and we call command dot execute non query because we aren't we are not expecting a result set, we can call this simple method. And once that's executed successfully, we set the edit index to negative one, which means that we aren't editing anything and we rebind the data to the grid view. So now let's look at the canceling edit method. And that is pretty simple as well. We're just setting the edit index to negative one and we are going to bind that data to the grid view again. Now we already looked at that method. Now let's look at what we do on the row deleting method. <clears throat> so same thing as before, we're going to get that grid view row, but the only thing we need off of it is the hidden color ID. So once again, we get the string, the connection string to the database from the web config. We pass that into a new SQL connection. We open that connection. We create a string delete from color where color ID equals, and we're going to get the value from the hidden color ID. We new up a SQL command with the SQL string and the database connection. We call command.execute non query because we aren't querying for anything. We just need to execute that command in the database. We set the editing index to negative one and we bind the data to the grid view. So now finally, the add row click event, same thing as before, we go get the connection string from the data from, we go get the connection string from the web config, we new up a SQL connection, we open that connection, we insert into color an empty name and an empty hex value because we just want a new row. We aren't putting anything into that new row. So we'll execute that non-query and bind the data to the grid view. 
In this video lecture, you are introduced to creating a data grid control and data binding with data in your SQL Server Express database. Thank you for listening.